Hey everybody, this is Pastor Mock, and this is now the second installment of the video series that I'm doing on fear, going through some of Michael Reeves' book, Rejoice and Tremble. And last episode, or last video, we considered the fact that the word fear is used throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, and that the word fear can be used in a, in a couple different ways. Sometimes it refers to a sinful fear, sometimes it refers to a right fear, or sometimes it refers to a, a natural fear. And we're going to delve a little bit more deeply in this episode in uh, sinful fear. And so let's just get right into it. Sinful fear is, uh, we, before we talk about sinful fear, we need to re be reminded that fear, just like other emotions, is coming from what we love. So if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're afraid, if you are joyful, then that affection speaks about something that you love. And maybe in, in the case of fear, you are you love something that you are now afraid of losing because its loss is being threatened. And and we might have a love of ourselves, and there is a right sense of loving ourselves, where we are trying to protect ourselves. We, we regard this body as uh, a good thing from God, and we want to keep it alive as long as possible. We love our families, we love our friends, we love various things, and sometimes we have a fear because we or Something else that we love is uh, is being threatened. And sometimes there is a, a fear of, of the lovely itself. Reeves draws this out by pointing to J.R.R. Tolkien. And Tolkien, he speaks, you know, the Lord of the Rings author. And he, he spoke of his love of dragons. And he how he loved to include them in his stories, even though they were very terrifying. He thought that his narratives would be better to have these dragons in them than to be removed from the stories because they were beautiful creatures, the way that he wrote of them. And sometimes there's an error in our own modern day thinking that seeks to correct the lack of reverence. And, and it's true that in our society there is a lack of reverence for God. And so some people try to correct that lack of reverence by instilling heavy doses of a fear of God or a terror of God. Well, going back to chapter one in Michael Reeves' book, there are different kinds of, of fear. And Moses, in Exodus 20, this is just after the Ten Commandments are given. And, of course, there was much lightning and thundering that took place that caused the people to tremble. He says in, uh, it says in Exodus 20, verses 18 through 20, Now when all the peoples saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Of course, they were struck by such terror on the mountain. It was quite the sight, I'm sure. Moses said to the people in verse 20, Do not fear, for God has come to test you. And notice what he says next that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. So he says, don't fear. God is testing you to see if you will fear him and not sin. And so we have, even just in Exodus 20, two senses of fear. There is a trembling that would move someone away from God, and there is 
a fear that moves someone to God. And in Exodus 20, not in, manifested in not sinning by keeping those commandments that were just given to the people. Now, of course, we, we have a natural fear, and this is instilled in us. We, because we live in a fallen creation, it's right to fear certain things like danger. We wouldn't want to have a reckless attitude on the road, so there's a, a natural fear of a car accident that sets us right and prepares our minds to look around us to, to make sure that we're driving safely and not harming ourselves or others. That's a, that's a good natural fear. But what we're talking about this morning is a sinful fear versus a right fear. And sometimes sinful and right fear are categorized with different words in the history of the church or in the Puritans. Some might say there's a sinful versus a religious fear. Or there is a servile versus a filial fear. We'll look at filial fear next time. Or some will say there's a slavish fear versus a holy fear. Or an ungodly fear versus a godly fear. So again, we're looking at sinful fear this morning. This is a fear that flows from sin. It flows from the love of sin and the love of self. This is a fear that drives you away from God. Think of James chapter 2, verse 19, that the demons believe in God, but not as their Savior. They're, they know God, but they know him only one way, and because of that misunderstanding, they shudder. In Genesis 3, verse 10, we have Adam and Eve fearing God and hiding. They didn't run to God for grace. They ran away from God and hid themselves because they were afraid of what he might do to them. Well, of what he said he would do to them. That on the day that they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would die. Martin Luther, sometimes reflecting on his, before his conversion days, the days as a monk, he said, do I, do I love God? No, sometimes I hated God because he only had one view of God. This arose from a misunderstanding of God, this kind of sinful fear. In Luke 19, verse uh, 21, with the parable of the ten minas, there's a servant who didn't invest his master's money Verse 20, then another came saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. I was afraid because you are a severe man. And Thomas Manton says that Satan labors to represent God by halves. In other words, he only paints a, a, a half of a picture only as God is a consuming fire and nothing else. He is a, a terror and not uh, you know, a, a gracious comforter, Father. So when we misunderstand God, we will not trust in him. We won't come to him. We won't turn to him for security and mercy and comfort and grace and redemption. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, the people, this is in Samuel's farewell address, the people had a flinching fear of the Lord. In chapter 12, verses 20 through 24, Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid. You have, you have done all this evil. Yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. For the Lord will not forsake his people for, the, for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and right way. 
the people sinned by asking for a king, a king like that of the nations, and not having God or God's appointed king to be their leader. And he says, verse 24, only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. That will lead us into the next lesson on a right fear. But there is still a, a double sense of fear in this passage. Don't be afraid. Yes, you have done evil. But don't be so consumed that God's going to judge you that you run away from God. Run towards him. This sinful fear is a dread of holiness. It's a fear of the light. And we, it, Jesus says in, in John 2, the people prefer darkness to the light. They don't want their dark works to be exposed to the light, so they hide. That's a sinful fear. That's a fear that moves you away from the gracious God. And Christians are not immune to this sinful fear. Sometimes because of our painful circumstances, sometimes because of just poor teaching from the pulpit, uh, uh, and just what we see on social media and what we read in books, sometimes because of persecution from the devil, we are cultivating a fear that uh, is moving us away from God. And, and that's a sinful fear. That's, that's not understanding God for who he really is. <clears throat> so that's the kind of fear that we want to avoid. We want to then replace that sinful fear with a right fear, which we'll look at next time. Well, I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.